All right, YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Demo here, back with another video. And today I am finally back bringing you guys another Let's Talk Airsoft episode. I'm gonna show you guys how to get your Polar Star Jack F1 or F2 to shoot like a fusion engine. There's a reason why Polar Star prices the fusion engine higher than all of their other HPA systems. So the main appeal with the fusion engine is that it's a complete drop in replacement for your v2 gearbox or whatever version of gearbox you have i'm using v2 as an example because a lot of you guys out there have m4s now i don't have a fusion engine on me i couldn't get my hands on one for this video so you guys are gonna have to bear with me on that but what i mean when i say it's a complete gearbox replacement it literally replaces the gearbox that's inside of your gun now as an example since i don't have the actual fusion engine i do have a gearbox here this is a retro arms black v2 gearbox the shell it's, split now. it's gonna look just like this except it'll have all the hpa components in and the hose sticking out but this will it's gonna be it's gonna look just like a gearbox and literally all you do is you take the gearbox out of your gun replace it with the polar star the fusion engine and it drops right in that's the appeal with the fusion engine a lot of people like it because they can still keep their actual aeg gearbox intact not have to touch it and have a whole separate hpa system installed into their gun but we're not talking about fusion engines today we're talking about the drop-in kits the jack the f1 and the f2 to be specific now with those what you have to do is you take your gearbox you pretty much gut it out you keep your spring guide well if your gun has a stock you keep your spring guide you keep the screw for the trigger board and that's pretty much it you drop your hpa engine in there and then you're ready to go one thing that i personally like about the dropping kiss f1 f2 and jack are that it lightens up your gun a lot we're gonna get into my polar star build here in a little bit but what i did is I actually went with one of these retro arms gearbox shells there's a story behind it but i actually have a retro arms gearbox shell in here with my polar star f2 so the fact that i have the f2 in there alone lightens up everything because there's no gears or motor or anything in the gun but also the fact that it's an aluminum gearbox shell it makes it a lot lighter and you guys know these retro arm shells man these these things is fire now i know you're also wondering how what does that have to do with getting it to shoot like a fusion engine what's so what, what's what's the point of this video well for those of you guys that do not know the fusion engine and trigger board the micro switch on it it's got a button and it's got a really nice like how do i explain it it's got a nice click to it every time you pull the trigger it's a really nice clicky as you'll say clicky feeling to it something about fusion engines man if you tune it properly you can get the trigger response to respond fast but it also feels fast if that makes it feels nice yo if you've never shot a fusion engine then you might not know what i'm talking about for all my guys out there that have though or if you own an fe you know exactly what i'm talking about in my personal opinion those are the best micro switches out there as far as these hpa systems are concerned with the jack f1 and f2 they all share the same trigger board and the switch on that it's it's kind of hard to explain but there's no click it's literally just a tab that sticks out and the trigger presses it in and activates it there's no really felt response to it you just know it actuates when you hear the click from the solenoid so what i would like to introduce you guys to is this right here this is the black leaf airsoft customs speed trigger board it's a drop-in trigger board that has that clicky micro switch feel just like an fe it feels just like a fusion engine but you can have it in your jack f1 or f2 and today i'm going to show you guys how we install it in my f2 now you guys are gonna have to bear with me with my setup my house is still kind of under construction with, with quarantine and everything going on still kind of confined to this tight space so i'm sorry about the colors the lighting and everything I'm working with what i got i'm gonna try to get a close-up of the black leaf trigger board and I'll also try to get a close-up of the stock trigger board show you guys the difference between the two also the difference of the switches so you guys can see the black leaf trigger board switch compared to the standard stock polar star switch the gun i'm installing it in is none other than sharkisha a lot of you guys know this gun this thing has changed so many times but this is in its current state, I guess I can go over everything I have on this gun for you guys real quick. All right, so we're going to go front to back. Up front, I have the Ace Tech Lighter BT. A lot of you guys already saw my video on this. Up front, though, this is a Airsoft Gateway Custom Anodized Aluminum Cap. As you guys know, these plastic caps for these Ace Techs be popping off. So, um, shout out to Gateway, man. They made this red cap for it, and you know I had to add it for the Sharkisha build. But I got the Ace Tech Lighter BT. Yo, okay, so post-production demo here. I totally forgot to tell y'all what outer barrel this is. I get a lot of questions regarding the red outer barrel and where I got it and how I did it and whatnot. It's not a custom anodizer or nothing. This is actually a Tokyo Arms outer barrel kit. I believe it comes with like maybe four or five pieces. You can adjust the length depending on what you need. This one actually sits pretty damn flush with the rails, like a little bit inside 
the rail. But uh, yeah, Tokyo Arms is the outer barrel. Totally forgot that, my bad, y'all. The rail right here, a lot of you guys are gonna ask what rail this is. This is an SLR Airsoft Works rail made by Ditax. Got a custom Cerakote on it. This is the M-Lock version. This is an, I wanna say 11 inch rail, if I'm not mistaken. But since this M-Lock, I had to throw my accessories on there. This one is a Knight Evolution, the Bravo Scout Light. Night Evolution is the OEM, but Bravo Scout Light sitting on their 45 degree mount. My gun's unloaded, but I'm gonna muzzle flash you guys real quick just to show you where the flashlight actually sits. 45 degrees offset from the rail. I got a PTS flip up front sight right here with the switch taped on the opposite side. Right here, this is a Strike Industries. I wanna say it's their S-Link or their Link curved grip. This works on both M-Lock and Key Mod. Moving on up to the site right here, this is another SLR Airsoft Works replica T1. So it's basically the G&G &G GT1 red dot, uh, but SLR, uh, they actually have, well, Ditac actually made the SLR Airsoft Works replica mount right here. This thing's pretty sick, it's lightweight. This is a red dot, only red dot with 11 brightnesses. I also have a Wii Tech, like W-I-I, yes, like the video game console. Uh, lens protector right here, a lot of you guys ask what lens protectors I use. That's this one right here. It's basically just a little Lex hand with a, a rubber cap on it that I have glued onto the site. All right, so zooming out here for the receiver, this is a g, &G SR Series Combat Machine receiver. So believe it or not, g, &G actually released Battleship Grade Combat Machines. It was the SR, SRL, and SRXL, I believe. I don't know if you guys know this, but this gun did start off as a g, &G Predator, which is a all metal gun. But since I got my hands on the Retro Arms gearbox shell, I figured why not throw a polymer body and make it even lighter. And to match the Retro Arms gearbox shell, I went with a Retro Arms selector switch right here. We also got the mock bolt release in red the mock selector cover and the mock forward assist. They don't do anything, but they just look nice along with the retro mag release right here. And my speed trigger right here is red too. Moving on back to the stock right here. This is a MFT Battlelink Minimalist stock. Then we got the Strike Industries on the grip and also a Strike Industries Cobra Fang trigger guard. And y'all know, I had to throw the For the Culture decal on there. Shout out to everybody who slapped in my decals on their gun. If you guys want to cop some for the culture merch or whatever merch I got, click the link in the description. It'll take you to my website where you guys can cop some decals, some stickers, some merch, some sweats, some hoodies, whatever it is. I got new stuff coming soon, man. Get your merch. Now, let me take the upper receiver off so that way we can see what's inside this thing. All right, so this is what my Polar Star looks like sitting inside the Retro Arms gearbox shell, all nice and shiny for you guys. Quick backstory behind this. Um, this happened on accident. So I bought the retro arm shell, planning to build up a DSG and whatever. I never bought the parts for it. And I just ended up putting my Polestar in it. And I'm really a big fan of the weight and just how everything looks, especially with the red theme going on. Looks dope. Yeah, it ended up in here on accident, but I stuck with it. It works for me. And honestly, I think I'm gonna do this again for my uh, Polestar Kythera build coming soon. Onto my upper, you guys know, I had to keep the red theme going. So my barrel setup for this, this is the Christmas edition. You guys see the little, see those little airsofters right there? The little snowflakes. This is the Max Model hop-up unit, the ME. This is probably one of my favorite hop-ups out there. I was gonna do the Tracer one, but I'm, I'm good on all that. I don't need any extra wiring in there. Matched with the hop-up, I have a Promi 603 Type 4, I think it's a 300 millimeter, and then I have a Prometheus Purple Bucking and Nub in there. And it shoots straight. I've been through a bunch of different hop-up setups, but this is a basic one, no flat hops, R hops, nothing like that. I play indoor, I don't really need to shoot too far, but this thing shoots beams. All right, but enough about the build. Let me take this apart real quick, and we're gonna get to the inside of this. I'll pick up the video again once I get to the trigger board and I'll show you guys the difference and everything. All right, before I get to the install, I wanna show you guys the difference between the stock Polar Star board and the Black Leaf Speed Board. Polar Star board is on the left, the Speed Board is on the right. Now, Polar Star does have a couple different trigger boards. This is kind of one of their older F1 and uh, Jack trigger boards. Their F2 trigger board will have two of these modules just like the Speed Board does right here. But I've had this one laying around for a while for my Polar Star board, but I wanted to show you guys the difference between the two because these actually have a very similar cut and design in comparison to the F2 board, which I'll grab right now, compared to this, which comes with their F2s, and I think they might start shipping these with their jacks, and I think this, is my, this might just be their newest board, honestly. But yeah, before I did the install, I wanted to show you guys the quick difference right here. Now, getting into some details, I'm going to show you guys the switch on the original Polar Star board real quick. All right, so I'm just freehanding this just to show you guys. This is the switch on the stock trigger board right here. You guys can see that that's where your trigger engages you can't hear anything you can't really feel it either when you're using it um but what's cool about that is you can tune it to where your trigger sits right on it and then you pull and you're good and here is on the black leaf speed board you guys can see one this switch is a lot shorter in length in comparison to 
the Polar Star. So naturally, you'll just be able to set your trigger a lot closer. Again, I'm just freehanding this just to show you guys the response here. Click on it. Oh yeah, you can feel it and it's a pretty good click to it as well. Another nice detail that they've added to the speedboard, you guys can see where the N and the P are. Um, on your F2 or a lot of your systems that have dual solenoids, well, the F2 actually, each solenoid has to plug into those. Should actually be using this one <laughs> instead. But yeah, you see NP, one's for nozzle, one's for pop it. Super simple. Don't think about the black leaf packaging as it tells you right on the back. For Polarstar Jack slash F1, use port P. Easy. Again, I am just freehanding this. I haven't tried installing anything yet, but one thing that I noticed, uh, minus this one, if you look at these, they are similar in design, but looking at these tabs right here, the speedboard is actually sticks out a little bit more than the polish stars. I don't know how that's gonna deal with alignment. I don't know how that's gonna, you know, work when I have to actually place this in the gearbox shell and line everything up, but we'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna have to make some adjustments or not, but that's one thing I noticed is this tab sticks out a lot, a lot farther. Well, not a lot, but it's noticeably farther than the stock Polestar one. Also, we'll see how the positioning of everything affects the wiring on the inside, because you can see Polestar's ports face, they're kind of like laid flat and face that way towards the rear of the gun. And these actually all point straight up. So we'll see. Last thing I noticed, which is a super dope touch, is you see P-Star, Speedboard, hashtag HPA for life. That shit's dope. And the Blackleaf logo on the back. Yo, shout out to Blackleaf. This is this is pretty nicely constructed. Uh, one other difference I notice is on the back here. I believe Polarstar has this right here to engage with, I think the selector plate. I wanna say that has to do with the safety. So um, I, I know a lot of y'all safeties don't work, but my safety on my Polarstar works and we'll see if it still works when I install the speedboard. I think that's what that's for. All right, y'all, so I have my gearbox open right here and I just wanna show you, if I can get in camera real quick, where my trigger sits. So I have it tuned pretty damn low, you guys can see, but it sits right on that micro switch right there, like right on it to where all I have to do is pull in and that's it. But there's no actual response. Like you don't hear anything, you don't feel anything, you just, you know, the solenoid will activate and you'll you'll feel that, but that's about it. There's no physical feeling of the trigger. So that, what's nice about that is that it feels really, really light, but I don't know. I like tactile triggers. That's why I prefer the trigger board on the Fusion engine. So we're gonna take my trigger out and we're gonna remove this and install the black leaf board. All right, so moment of truth, I'm just gonna remove this here and we're gonna drop in the black leaf board. Now, before I install this, this is with a retro arms gearbox shell. I know not a lot of you guys will be installing this into a retro arm shell. A lot of you guys will have maybe GNG gearbox shells or whatnot. This is just an example of my experience with this gearbox shell. I'm pretty sure it might work with other ones. Okay, so actually taking everything apart, I was able to confirm this definitely does come in contact with the selector plate. So if I put the P-Star switch on there and flip this over, you guys will see right there on the back comes in contact right there and that is for my safety i believe so yeah my safety probably won't work with the black leaf board but that's all good i don't know this thing drops in and one issue is the alignment i don't know if you guys can see the alignment right there that is sitting completely flush here sitting completely flush doesn't come in contact in the back here but I'm gonna have to see if I can line this up properly and get it screwed in because there's a slight misalignment. I don't know, let's try it. It doesn't wanna line up all the way. Yeah, no, okay, so there's no way I can get this thing to sit properly. Yeah, no, that, so that doesn't even fit in there. Damn, okay. Since these have a similar cut, I'm gonna see where the F1 trigger board sits in the retro shell, F1. Okay, it's like a perfect fit right in there. I'm dropping the speed board in there, black leaf. It's slightly off, you guys can see like barely. And I don't wanna force anything, so what I might have to do is slightly enlarge this portion just a bit, just enough to get the screw in. All right guys, so I did get it to fit. You guys can see right here, it's installed. It's not budging, it's not moving, it's not going anywhere. It's in there, it's installed nicely. All I had to do was I took this file right here um, and I just enlarged the hole just a little bit for it to fit. Now that is for, again, this Retro Arms gearbox shell. I don't know how it is for any other gearbox shell, but for my guys over at Blackleaf, the only difference I would make is, um, 
is just that. So this tab right here, it's probably easier to show you guys now. This tab right here just sticks out a little bit farther than the stock Polestar one, which isn't bad, but it is just something that I noticed when it came down to installing. It wasn't a complete drop in on this gearbox shell. It was barely off by the smallest measurement. But again, I don't know how it is with any other gearbox shell, but that's with my retro arm. Now I've got my speed trigger. I back the screws all the way out just to see how this engages with the micro switch. Wow, that you notice the difference for sure. It clicks. Oh, that feels nice. Whoa, that feels nice. All right, hold up. Yo, where's my spring at? Let me put a spring behind this. It actually feels like the FE trigger board. Wow. Okay, so look, I'll show you guys where it engages at compared to the stock one. Look, I get all of this freedom before it even touches. So all of this, that's slack. I can tune the trigger all the way to where it touches the switch and all I have to do is pull it a little bit till it clicks and I can adjust it again to where it stops the reset. That is nice and it feels good, wow. Okay, cool, let's get this all installed. All right, so I've got the black leaf board installed here into my retro arms gearbox shell. Pretty easy install, just had to do the one minor adjustment. Now, um, let's plug a battery in and see what we're working with here. I have the trigger completely backed out, so I still need to do some trigger tuning with this speed trigger. But I did that on purpose just so I can actually see how it feels and shoots without a complete trigger adjustment. So, battery's plugged in. You guys can hear that. Yeah, this is a big difference. Being able to feel the brake and, and feel that micro switch engaging. Oh my gosh, that's nice. All right, so now I know a lot of you guys have Polar Stars with speed triggers and you guys are like, yo, Demo, how do you get that trigger response and blah, 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 blah. Look, some people like very, very responsive triggers where it's tuned all the way down and you barely have to touch it and it shoots or some people like having a little bit of play with theirs. What I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna take this slack out because I don't need that. I'll probably have the trigger sitting right where the switch is. You can't really hear it on camera, but I can feel it. So I'm probably gonna adjust it here, where it's right on the switch. I pull, engages, right when I let go and feel that click from the micro switch, it'll stop right there. So that is literally my trigger pull. It's like a button press. So while I have my battery plugged in, I'll make these adjustments. I'll actually be able to tell where. Let's see, it's not even moving, it's too far. Okay. Not quite. Oh, that's nice right there. I think that might be it. I'll make some future adjustments if I need to, but that is nice. It's right where it engages, pop, it's a shot, comes off. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Now I know one issue a lot of you guys have when reinstalling gearboxes with speed shakers that are already tuned. When you're reinstalling them into your receiver, sometimes they don't fit all the way uh, just because of where you have your trigger tuned at, it catches on the actual cutout for the trigger. Sometimes it's not that bad, but sometimes you gotta take your whole trigger guard off and it's just extra work. So what I'm gonna do, since this is a polymer receiver and I really don't care too much about it, is file out some of this space right here. All right guys, so with everything installed here, I wanna confirm real quick, semi works, full auto. I mean, it's semi locked right now, but that also works. And then safety, no longer works that's the only difference with the black leaf board if you guys want to work in safety sorry with the, with the black leaf board you're, you're just not going to get it i mean i'm sure there's ways you can figure it out but um yeah black leaf suggestion to you guys super dope board but if you could throw one of these on there it would be pretty sick for maybe for the v2 but nonetheless this thing is really nice really responsive now i can do a little bit more tuning on this because it does kind of Sounds a little funky on the reset. So I'll probably tune it down just a little bit more to where it engages. You can definitely feel the switch. Um, it's not as spammable um, as say the stock Polestar switch because it is a little bit heavier and a little bit larger. But I think with the right trigger adjustments, you can keep up with the stock Polestar switch. But I still prefer Man, that just, it feels so nice. I still prefer this switch. I'm gonna air it up and we'll see. All right, so I get a lot of questions regarding what setup I use, regulator, tank, and all that. So to go over, this is my go-to regulator. This is a Polar Star MRS. I'm currently missing the on and off knob, which is why I have this one here. So I won't even be able to use this right now, but shout out to Polar Star. They're actually gonna send me 
another knob to replace the one that I missed. So thank you Polar Star for that. Highly recommend it. This one or even their micro reg, their micro gen 2 reg is pretty dope. I might even upgrade to that one. But this thing's pretty sick. The reg I was using before that, and this is still old faithful to me. This is my old Redline SFR. You guys can just see the profile difference on these, man. Airsoft regulators have definitely come a long way. Still a little bit behind paintball, but hey, working with what we got. And then I have my Ninja. This is the Super Light 45. 45 is a little 45 tank. This thing fits perfectly in my backpack. Invest in a good tank, my recommendation. This is one of my favorite lines. This is a amped airsoft custom uh i have the igl and this is one of their custom lines i forgot what they're abbreviate for their custom lines but yo shout out to amp man this thing is super dope i need to get another one you guys can see it's kind of beat up kind of old i want to get my hands on another one right here i don't know if you guys can still see it but it would say originally when it was clean it said the demo and then the hashtag for the culture right there shout out to amp they sent this to me it was so dope man super dope people over there too shout out to everyone that rocks with me yo No way. Wow. I'll put this in here. And there's the leak coming from these two ports right here. I have no idea what that is. But that's... All right, guys. I hate to end on bad news, but unfortunately, this video was going all the way good until I decided to plug air into my gun. And I'll just show you guys what I'm talking about, man. I'm super bummed out on this, but being in contact with a few people, I figured out what the issue is and we're gonna get it fixed. But to show you. That is right, my gun is leaking, unfortunately, and it's not from the mount. Uh, it's actually an issue with my solenoid that to get those replaced unfortunately, but I'm gonna get in contact with Polar Star so we can get that fixed. And once I get that fixed, I promise I will bring you guys some gameplay and a shooting test of this. It sucks that this happened mid video, but um, I did wanna show you guys what the issue was. It had nothing to do with the board at all. The trigger response on this still feels super nice. I still love this really, really clicky response, but I will bring you guys a follow-up video on this. I promise, I promise. Ah, oh, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't bummed that I can't shoot this, but it's all good, you know? I'm just gonna get this fixed, replace the solenoids and everything. And once that's done, I will bring you guys a full gameplay video with a performance review on what I think about the trigger board in action and all that. Major, major, major shout out to Black Leaf Airsoft again. Um, also shout out to Polish Star. I've been in contact with them lately. Hopefully I can get the solenoids for this replaced and get everything fixed. I know I know the guys at Polish Star have been super busy uh, working to get these Kaiteras out to everyone. So, yo, I just want to thank you guys for all the love and support you guys have been showing on this channel, even through quarantine and all the crazy stuff that's been going on in this world, I really just wanna thank you guys. You guys have shown nothing but mad love. It's been a little bit tough for me to bring out content, but even when I do, you guys show nothing but support behind it. And uh, I just wanna thank you guys. It really means a lot. Now I do have more Let's Talk Airsoft videos planned. I got, uh, I got this bad boy, but you guys will see what I do with this in the future. That's for another video. But I also have two other Let's Talk Airsoft videos that I have kinda kind of in the vault right now, but I want to know what you guys want to see first. My DSG ARP9, which currently isn't working, but I owe you guys a breakdown and everything of it. This was built by Mass Arms. Shout out to my guy, Mass Arms. He actually built this for me. Um, I have a DSG breakdown and overview plan for a Let's Talk Airsoft episode. I've had this plan for the longest time, but I've been running into some issues with this gun and just everything going on in my life in general, which has been kind of tough to film but we've got the dsg breakdown if you guys want that and i've also got to give another shout out to my guy primary airsoft man here is the you guys know what these are this is the hpa mag adapter goes fry kappa if you guys don't know you can throw an m4 mag in there run that you feel me shout out to primary i also have a let's talk airsoft video planned on a couple of his newer adapters it'll be the m4 with the flared magwell and one that holds arp9 mags and also this bad boy right here this is a 3D printed slide for High Kappa. You guys can see it. Oh man, this thing is so fire. I also got this from Primary Airsoft as well. Those are the two main videos that I have planned for Let's Talk Airsoft that are, they're gonna be bangers. But I wanna know, what do you guys wanna know more about? My DSG ARP9 and breakdown of this? Or do you guys want me to overview all the Primary Airsoft products? So basically it comes down to, do you guys want a High Kappa video? Or a DSG video? Let me know in the comments below. Also for everyone out there that does own a Polar Star, what type of engine do you run? What's your setup? Let me know. I cannot wait to finally get back out there and play again. It's been so long since I played. Once I get the replacement parts for my F2, 
They're gonna be installed, we're gonna hit the field, I'm gonna see how this thing performs. But yeah, that about wraps it up. You guys have seen the sun go down as I filmed this video because I've been stressing so much trying to deal with the solenoid issue, but glad I figured it out, glad I can get that fixed, and glad I'll be able to get you guys some gameplay with it. But that wraps up another Let's Talk Airsoft episode. It's been your boy Demo. I love you guys. Thank you, I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day, night, whatever time it is you're watching this. Stay safe, stay blessed. I love y'all. We do it for the culture. Drink your water, stupid. I need to drink my water. My lips are dummy dry. We out. Peace.